for tuning in to another episode of In Range. I'm coming to you today from the tourist-laden streets of Tombstone, Arizona, standing in front of the reproduction of the Campbell and Hatch Billiard Saloon. Reproduction, you might say, why? Well, that's because this part of Tombstone burned down not once, but twice. And so while that building is standing where the Campbell and Hatch Saloon was, it is not the original building. This burnt down the first time, March of 1882. However, on March 18th of 1882, at 10.15 p.m., Morgan Earp was assassinated while playing billiards right here at this location. I'm standing on Fremont Street in front of one of the very historic buildings here in Tombstone, Arizona. This building's been here since 1881 and continues to stand to this day. It's an impressive two-story structure completely built of adobe. When it was built in 1881, it was named after the founder's namesake of Ed Shifflin, thus Shifflin Hall. It was used then for, as a theater for uh, plays, comedies, musicals, and it still is today. You can actually still see a show here at Shifflin Hall in 2019. However, March 18th, 1882, Wyatt and Morgan Earp decided they needed a little levity in their lives. Two and a half months before that, their brother Virgil Earp barely survived an assassination attempt while crossing the street between the Oriental and the Crystal Palace saloons. A whole bunch of people in a building that was being constructed opened up on him with shotguns and maimed him for life. They crippled him in his left arm and he was never able to use it again. He was still recovering from those wounds in March. They went to see a show just north of here at a hall called Tuver and Hall, and they saw a comedy, famous at the time, called Stolen Kisses. And around 10 o'clock at night, they decided they weren't done yet, and they wanted to have a little more fun, so they headed down to the Campbell and Hatch Saloon to play a game of billiards. Cool. 10.15 p.m., Morgan Earp is lining up a shot over the billiard table, and a shot rings out fired through a stained glass window pane on the door behind him. The door had clear glass above it and stained glass below it. Someone lined up either a pistol or a rifle, probably 4440, through the stained glass and aimed up through the clear glass and fired. First shot was effective. It went through his body, severed his spine, and landed up in the leg of Geo Barry, right here. He was playing pool with Morgan Erm that night and received the ball into his leg and fell down as well. Another shot was fired immediately after that at Wyatt Earp, who was leaning against the wall watching the game. That shot went wild and went above his head and missed. They grabbed Morgan off the pool table, pulled him to the floor, and dragged him back to the card table in an attempt to prevent other gunfire from hitting either one of them. This is one of the things that the movies generally get fairly right. The Tombstone movie shows some of that. However, Wyatt Earp from Kevin Costner actually shows most of that, but they do leave out George Berry being shot in the leg with that round that went through Morgan. Both the movies show him dying on the pool table, which isn't correct. They laid him on a lounge in the card table room, and he did live for a little while. They called for the doctors, one of which the famous Dr. Goodfellow came and proclaimed the wound mortal. At one point, Morgan Earp said, please lay my legs out straight and to pick him up so he could stand. And he said, don't, I can't stand it. This is the last game of pool I will ever play. He also whispered something to Wyatt that no one knows what it is. There's all sorts of lore about it, but actually no one will ever know what Morgan said to Wyatt before he died. But he died there in that card table room on that lounge, bleeding out from a bullet fired through that stained glass window. Another thing both the movies did a little wrong is they show the assassination attempt on Virgil and the murder of Morgan Earp as being on the same night. They were two and a half months apart, but I understand why they do that for movie versions. So when tourists come to Tombstone, they always go to Boot Hill to see the original cemetery, and there's some value in seeing that, although it was left in general disrepair. The city cemetery actually was left in good repair for the entire duration of Tombstone up until including today. There are famous graves here as well as in Boot Hill, such as C.S. Fly. If you've ever seen any photos from southern Arizona, southeastern Arizona, or Tombstone, it's about a 99% chance that this was the man that took that picture. He famously took pictures of, of almost everyone here in town, as well as Geronimo when he had broken out of the San Carlos Apache Reservation a number of times. So, really interesting to bring you the grave of a very famous person that did a lot to preserve our history, yet his name is not as well known as it probably deserves. Behind me is another very important historic structure in the Tombstone Historic District. This is the original home of Pete Spence, still standing since that day. It's interesting to note that he was one of, of course, the enemies of the Earps. He lived right here on Fremont Street. Just west of him was the house of Virgil Earp, and just west of that was the house of Wyatt Earp. Wyatt's house no longer stands, neither does Virgil's. However, there is a house here that's reported to be the Wyatt Earp house, and that is incorrect. But that's a story for another day. What's interesting about this house is that Pete Spence is one of the people that Wyatt Earp believed was part of the assassination against Morgan Earp. Marietta Spence, 
Pete Spence's wife, who, by the way, also was a consistent victim of domestic violence in this home, testified after the assassination of Morgan that Pete and a few others were conspiring in the living room of this house talking about the actual murder. She said that they were sitting in the living room armed with a guy named Indian Charlie, Frank Stilwell, and others, and when she came in the room, they all quieted down to hushed tones. As well as, four days before this, she was out on the street with Pete and with Indian Charlie, and as Morgan Earp passed by, Pete Spence nudged Indian Charlie and said, that's him, that's the guy, trying to essentially indicate that when Indian Charlie was going to be part of this assassination, who to aim for. On the night of the shooting, Marietta said that she heard the gunfot, gunshots fired while sleeping in her bed here, and a little while later, Pete Spence, Frank Stilwell, and Indian Charlie barged into the living room, all in a hustle. And when she came into the room, once again, they did not discuss what had happened. It's interesting to note that the prosecution was unable to use this testimony against Pete Spence during the trial against him because the defense argued that it was not legal for a wife to provide testimony against her husband. It's also interesting to note that Wyatt Earp never believed that Pete Spence was involved in the murder. He believed it was Frank Stilwell. He later killed Frank Stilwell on the train tracks in Tucson, Arizona while transporting the body of Morgan Earp to Colton, California for the funeral. We have a video about that on the channel. Let's go over a basic timeline of events. October 26th, 1881, the street fight happened, otherwise now known as the gunfight at the OK Corral. Two and a half months after that, in December, Virgil Earp is almost murdered in an assassination attempt at 5th and Allen Street. A couple months after that, March 18th, 1882, Morgan Earp is effectively assassinated at the Campbell and Hatch Billiard Saloon. This is what officially launches Wyatt Earp's vigilante ride, or vendetta ride depending on how you want to look at it. The first victim of which is Frank Stilwell on the train tracks of Tucson, Arizona, while transporting the body of Morgan Earp to the cemetery in Colton, California. It's interesting to note, however, that as we mentioned earlier in the video, the primary suspect in this murder was Pete Spence, based on the testimony of his wife, which was not allowed in court. However, Wyatt Earp just refuted that testimony and believed that it was Frank Stilwell that did it. However, it's also interesting to note that the Tucson, Arizona Daily Star reported Frank Stilwell being in Tucson six hours after the murder of Morgan Earp. That's 70 miles away from Tombstone. It is possible theoretically to ride a horse that far in six hours, but I don't know how you do it without killing the horse or using multiple horses. Most horse rides were 30 miles at most. The military would ride 60 miles, but they would do that in a day, not in six hours. So that's an interesting alibi, and we don't know what to make of that. However, it's also interesting to note that after the murder of Frank Stilwell, Pete Spence was so concerned about his own safety that he was in jail at that time as a suspect, and the local jailers gave him a gun while he was in jail to defend himself if the Earps actually showed up. So that's an interesting note, a, a suspected murderer, and by the way, Pete Spence was no angel, we know he was not a good guy, but a suspected murderer in jail is armed by his jailer to defend himself against someone who's potentially coming to kill him. Maybe that's the Wild West, or maybe that's a notion of who his friends were, or maybe it's a notion of what was really going on in this territory and that it was true chaos at that point about who was law and who was not. After the killing of Frank Stilwell, the Earp Party was no longer lawmen. They had warrants out for the murder of Frank Stilwell, and subsequent murders or killings, or vigilanteism that occurred in their vendetta ride was done in an outlaw fashion, no longer onto the protection of law. That's something that I see is erroneously reported in a lot of the comments in my videos is that he was a lawman. And the key word is was, because after Frank Stilwell, he no longer was. Guys, hopefully you like this kind of really deep dive, interesting historical information, and you like us bringing to you the true story of what happened here in Tombstone, Arizona, and other places. This is one the movie's got more right than wrong, but still the nuance is very important. If you like this kind of stuff, please consider supporting us on Patreon. It is you, the viewer, that keep this channel alive. We get no funding or monetization from anywhere else. It's strictly you, the viewer. If you can't do it, we understand. Just subscribe to one of our multiple distribution channels. You can find them all at inrange.tv and share with your friends. Thanks a lot.